What's up guys, just wanted to make a quicker video on the comparisons between the Clash V2 100 and the Pro model. Whilst many of the specs on paper are very close and relatively the same, there are actually some noticeable differences I think between both frames that I'll try to point out. Some categories I'll keep to a minimum because there are not much differences between the two and for where I think there are noticeable comparable differences I'll try to flesh them out a little bit more. I do already have an in-depth review of the Clash 100 V2 which I'll link above or put in the description if you want to check it out. As always if you enjoy the video it's a great help to me if you press the like button to help with the algorithm and if you want to see more content subscribe to my channel for more racket reviews you can follow me on my instagram to check out what i'm kind of up to in the interim between making videos giving you an idea of what might be coming up next special thanks to the people who've supported me through my buy me a coffee page i'm putting the funds towards more content or any upgrades to the channel so if you do want to support me in any additional way you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash ac tennis Let's quickly run through the specs between the two rackets and see where they differ. Obviously both of them are 100 square inches, 24.5 millimeter beam width. The string pattern between the 100 and Pro is that the 100 has a 16 by 19 pattern where the V2 Pro has an added extra cross string like in the 98 model and the string density is a little bit more tighter than the open 1619 in the 100. The unstrung weight is 290 grams against the Pro's 310 grams and the strong weight is roughly 312 grams compared to to the pros 326 grams. The average stiffness RA is around 57 and measured slightly higher at 59 on the pro. Listed in the overlay you can find my string setups and modifications that I used throughout the time that I've played with these rackets. For the 100 pro model it was a demo but it was freshly strung with alu power at 52 pounds so it didn't really affect my playtest at all and alu power is a string that I've used before. Also the specs and swing weight came in about the right range according to the tennis warehouse averages so I found that I really didn't need to do any modifications to it at all which is why I don't have any other setups with it. For the feel and stiffness, I would say there's not much difference between the two despite the slightly different RA ratings. Both are as comfortable of a racket as you can possibly get. A little bit muted nonetheless, but nothing significantly impacts how I play or feel about the racket. There's quite a number of people who can't get over the feel despite the V2 being a little bit more solid, crisp and less bendy feeling than the original V1. But aside from that, I think it's a pretty decent trade-off for maintaining arm and wrist health. If you're looking to keep the free power, if you come from rackets like the Pure Drive, Pure Aero and ultras of the world. For power, they are powerful in a different way. So they are both powerful because mostly they have a super thick beam and has an increased stiffness in compared to the Clash V1. Now although it doesn't seem like the RA ratings have changed that much compared to the previous model, I don't think that explains the full story. As you can tell with the Blade V8, despite the flex not changing much, it does feel overall noticeably stiffer compared to the Blade V7. And likewise this has happened with the V2 and the V1 Clash. Now in terms of the 100's power, because it's so light it has a naturally a higher potential to generate racket heads speed and that's for a player like me who relies heavily on that I think my top speeds are faster at the peak of my biggest forehands than the pro model this does include the 100 being in stock and slightly weighted up to resemble a closer swing weight to the pro but because you can weight it up and still have a lower static weight then you can still maintain good racket head speed now with all things being equal regarding my strength and swing speed when I transition to the 100 pro the pro gets more of its power from the high swing weight and overall static weight so it uses more of its heft in general to produce a bigger ball but honestly if if I try to look at it objectively, I still felt like it didn't seem to launch off the racket as fast as the 100. So I would actually say there's still a slight but noticeable power drop in comparison. And that's nothing too detrimental, but it does factor in potentially a lower swing speed and also a lower powered response from the frame itself. So just keep in mind that if you're overall really strong and have a fast swing despite the higher weight, then your top speeds will obviously be higher with the 100 Pro, but this is how my experience ended up being. And there's a couple of key results that I found for me, which is with the increased heftiness not only could I not swing as fast due to the higher weight coupled with an extremely thick beam but actually I didn't have to swing as fast to increase the pace of the pro but I do note as I alluded to it does detract from my max speed on my all-out power shots. Now in terms of control, believe it or not, there does seem to be an actual difference with the added cross string on the Pro. Now is it actually something to do with the cross string? That I can't be so certain. There could be some changes to the layup or composition that we don't know about that differs between the 100 and the 100 Pro. But the 1619 pattern in the 100 is fairly open and the way they made the drill pattern for the 1620 seems reasonably more dense. But it doesn't make it some kind of magical precision machine. But the combination of the denser strings combined with the increased stability gives you a completely different playstyle 
style in terms of control. With the Pro model, you can spend way more time with this racket absorbing, redirecting pace and guiding shots to where you want, instead of having to swing out to maintain control through heavy spin like the 100. And this is something that I really enjoyed with the racket, where with many of the rackets I've recently been using like the Clash 100, E-Zone and Aero VS, I've been whipping my forehands at max speeds on almost every ball I touch. But the Pro model allows you to take your foot off the gas a lot more and just to defend and absorb pace without any effort. For maneuverability as I mentioned, it has decreased due to the highest swing weight and overall increase in static weight and obviously it's one of the thickest beam rackets you're going to get on market. The 100 was light enough that even with a thick beam it could be whipped around because it was still very headlight for a light frame and gave me max racket head speed even when using a modernized forehand swing path. The Pro kind of forced me to shorten my swing, be more efficient with the loop and forced me to strike behind the ball a lot more because I wasn't able to get as much wrist action on it. So in essence with that control I was talking about, I found myself blocking and redirecting a lot more shots when I had less time because sometimes I couldn't get the swing around if I was a little bit cramped or late. Now surprisingly both frames were still fine to use for a one-hander. The Pro is just as headlight as the 100 and though slightly slower on the Pro to get the one-hander around, it wasn't a terrible experience as you might think it could be according to the specs on paper. With spin, the 100 seems to have a lot more spin to it, or at least the launch angle is far higher. But yes, with max record head speed, I'm definitely going to get more spin with the 100. The Pro played with a much flatter trajectory, with still good spin capabilities, and of course, just in comparison to the 100, the launch angle was just definitely more consistent and controllable, and you do not have to rely on using as much spin to bring the ball back down. Slices I found relatively similar for both frames. They are not outstanding by any means compared to super close dense patterns, but actually I rate both models better than the Blade V8, as they are both better in spin capabilities, more consistent off the string bed, and cut through the court a lot easier because it's more powerful. For serving, the 100 is incredibly easy to serve with and I could hit all my shots, hit big flat serves, great slice serves and great kick serves. And really the Pro was not that much different, it just felt like a higher weighted variant and definitely would work really well with someone who enjoys their increased heffiness to provide an even bigger serve. There's not too much to touch on with the forgiveness. We're talking about a 100 square inch racket, an open string pattern with a headlight balance in both variants and you can bet these are going to be some of the most forgiving rackets on the market at the moment. For stability, it was one of the weaknesses for the 100. It did seem to lack a little bit, even with some extra weight added to bump up the swing weight. And I even thought that the V1 seemed to play better with stability in stock form for whatever reason. The 100 Pro, on the other hand, with absolutely no modifications in complete stock form, with the specs being what they basically listed in Tennis Warehouse, I think this has to be one of the most stable rackets you can find at this weight range. Generally, the only super stable stock rackets I've used in the past are the big boys, like the RF97, Blade Pro, Head Pro Tour 2.0, Wilson 6195. They all average around 320 to 340 grams unstrung where they are rock solid to the core with no shake or twisting on impact of any kind. And the Pro almost gives me a very similar feeling to that but at a much lower swing weight and its headlight as well. Which is why I said it was so easy to play with guiding and redirecting balls because the stability is quite a standout for me. It's just super solid. I was able to absorb very big shots just sticking the racket out at contact point and letting the racket do all the work for me. So it took some time for me to adjust because I know I longer use rackets like this as often and it's a totally different playstyle but once you adjust to it it's super enjoyable considering the racket is still relatively light and user friendly compared to some of the other ones listed at this weight range. Now I would say compared to the V1 it's probably not a ton different. I did demo it recently and found mostly a similar experience. I did not buy a 100 Pro model in the past so I can't really tell you much about my previous experiences of that in depth but it was mostly the feel on the V2 was just slightly more solid and less airy feeling than the V1. Likewise with volleys, the Pro was just way more enjoyable with the net because it was extremely solid and for the most part it was still pretty easy to get around. I could really let the racket do all the work if I just made it to the right contact point. The 100 model was more disappointing than anything because I really enjoyed the V1 for volleys but did not have the same experiences with the V2. So who is this racket for? The 100 is a little bit more versatile, it can be used by beginners and intermediates since it's very easy to use, super light and provides a bit of everything at that level. For a more advanced user you have an option of increasing the weight from lead tape using its power, forgiveness and still maintain a modernized forehand swing path for spin penetration and use this as a replacement to a pure drive in a more arm friendly setting. The Pro differs immensely because it's more of a racket that lets it do the work for you. If the weight is not too much out of your strength range, it's really good for those who 
who have a shorter, more efficient swing, or someone that doesn't typically swing as big but wants to have free power and stability. I think it would be suited for both singles and doubles, especially since it's so solid with volleys. If you do swing big, perhaps you're more of an experienced player, probably a more traditional swing path may be useful to maximize its potential, but just reiterating that both models seem to lend themselves to a much different playing style from my experience, and it's just a matter of which one you prefer more of. Again, arm friendliness is the story of the clash line, so it's always a consideration for anyone with past and present pains. Tennis is most enjoyable when it's pain free, so leave the ego at the door if you are concerned about its beam thickness or too much free power. Everything is adjustable if you spend time to adapt. And make sure you play around with strings and tension because that's always a factor that people forget about. If you really do need less power but want the comfort, definitely go for the Clash 98, a very formidable frame from my experience with the V1, but unfortunately still not released here yet in Australia, which I do intend to do a review on if it ever gets released. There's still no word on it at the moment. But that concludes my comparison and review of the Clash V2 100 and Pro model. Looking to get my hands on a Pure Strike VS if it does come out in Australia as well, but it seems like Australia is getting shafted a lot with the release dates of new frames and horrible logistics problems. Again, like and subscribe if you liked the video and check me out on Instagram for more updates. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.